Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Shelley. I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that you're enjoying your summer. Well, today it's time for another Bible story. So today we're going to be in Luke, and we're going to learn about a woman that anointed Jesus' feet. And in addition, we're going to learn about two people who approached Jesus differently. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a woman who lived in the city. Both were sinners, but one thought he was perfect and the other realized that she was a sinner in need of a savior. Two sinners, two attitudes, and two conclusions. So let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can sit at your feet and learn about you and learn how to become more like you. Lord, I pray that as we do this study, that we would truly understand the importance of having a personal relationship with you and how much you love us and how much you did for us and how much you want us to come to you as Lord and Savior. So Lord, as we open up your word, impress upon our hearts exactly what it is that you have for each and every boy and girl that's listening. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so as I talked about, we're gonna learn about two sinners today. One was a Pharisee and he thought he was perfect and the other was a woman, and she knew she was a sinner. So I want everyone to open, if you have your Bibles with you, to Luke 7, and we're gonna start in verse 36. So I'm gonna start reading, okay. Now, one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster, jar of perfume and she stood behind Jesus at his feet weeping she began to wet his feet with her tears then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them now in Jesus's time there was a group of religious leaders called Pharisees the Pharisees believed that they could be perfect and they really thought they were much better than everybody else and they really didn't like to hang out with ordinary people. The Pharisees basically separated themselves from other people because they thought they were so good. They were very prideful. The Pharisee that we're talking about today, his name was Simon. And Simon was a very prideful Pharisee. And he, of course, as I just mentioned, thought he was better than everyone else and he thought he could keep the law perfectly. So one day, Simon asked Jesus to his house for dinner. And of course, Jesus being the gracious man and wonderful savior that he is, he accepted that invitation. And he knew exactly what was going to happen at that dinner table. So again, I'm gonna read verses 36 through 38. Then one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and he sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. So that's basically a, a small bottle of perfume. And she stood at Jesus' feet behind him weeping, which means crying. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair on her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with that fragrant oil. Now the woman that came to see Jesus was a sinner. And she was probably well known in the town as a sinner. Yet she washed and kissed Jesus' feet and anointed his feet at the table while everyone was eating. She didn't really care that the people were around her eating dinner and that she was behind him washing his feet. She loved him and she knew who Jesus was. Back in those days, it was very, very important to be hospitable. And to be hospitable means you're a good host and that you're very kind to strangers and guests that you have in your home. Now, back in those days, everybody walked everywhere. They didn't have cars like we have today. So they walked everywhere and they would wear open-toed sandals and their feet would get very, very dirty. So it was customary whenever someone came to your house to dine that you would do a few things for them. The first things that you would do would be to wash their feet. You would also greet them with a kiss and you would anoint them with oil. Well, Simon was not a very good host. He did not pay Jesus any of these small respects. The lady that was the sinner was not Jesus's host or even invited to the feast. 
but she went out of her way to honor him because she really loved him and she knew who Jesus was. When someone is honored, that means they're shown the respect that they deserve. I wonder what we could do to honor Jesus. Hmm. I wonder what we would do if Jesus was invited to our home. So let's go on in verses, we're gonna read verse 39. Verse 39 says, Now when the Pharisee who invited Jesus saw this, he spoke to himself and said, This man, if he were a prophet, would know. And what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Hmm. Simon the Pharisee, Pharisee knew that this woman was a sinner, but I don't think he knew that he was a sinner. He thought he was perfect, as I mentioned earlier. Simon wouldn't even consider touching her because it would be a violation of his traditions. He would be considered unclean if he touched this sinful woman. Simon thought to himself, if Jesus really were a true prophet from God, he would know that this lady was a sinner and would not have touched her. So, it seems to me that Simon really had no idea who Jesus was. Simon didn't realize that Jesus wanted sinners to come to him so that he could forgive them of their sin and that they could spend eternity in heaven with him one day. Guess what, boys and girls? We can come to Jesus with any sin that we have and he will forgive us if we repent of our sins. So there's a very, very important difference between religion and relationship. Now, religion is what Simon the Pharisee had. He thought that he could be perfect and he could use this perfectness to go to heaven. But that doesn't give him a relationship with Jesus. Having a relationship with Jesus is done through our faith in Jesus. That's how we have a personal relationship with him because we believe in him. And at the cross, Jesus took the penalty for our sins. And that is what opened the door to fellowship with God. Simon was very, very religious, but he didn't have a relationship. This woman had a relationship and she knew who Jesus was. And that is why she sat behind him and was crying and weeping and anointing his feet and wiping and kissing his feet because she knew who he was, the only one that could save her from her sins and allow her to come to heaven and spend eternity. The good news is we can come to Jesus anytime, no matter what sins we've committed. Jesus loves us and wants us to come to him. So it's really important that we understand what forgiveness is. This woman knew she was a sinner and needed forgiveness, and that's why she honored Jesus. Simon thought he was perfect and didn't think he needed Jesus because he thought he could follow the law. But the Bible tells us if we break one commandment, we're guilty of all. So let's continue reading. Now we're in verses 40 through 43. And Jesus answered and said to Simon, I have something to say to you, Simon. So Simon said, teacher, say it. Jesus said there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, which means basically $500, and the other 50, which was basically $50. And when neither one of them had money to repay, he freely forgave them. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, Hmm, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And Jesus said to him, You have rightly judged. Jesus would often tell stories or parables to help people understand the importance of a certain truth. At this time, Jesus wanted Simon to understand that his heart was not right. The money lender in the story loaned money to two men. One had a large amount, which was probably about a year's worth of wages, and the other man he lent to was about a month worth of wages. Since neither one of the men could repay the creditor, he decided to cancel their debt. He forgave them of what they owed him. The man who owed them more money, the year's wages, was forgiven more because he had a bigger debt. He was obligated to pay more money back. Hmm, so let's see. Let's move on from this and see what happens. So in verses 44 through 48, then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has ceased not to kiss my feet since the moment I came in. 
You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is given, the same loves little. Then he said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Simon thought he was able to keep the whole law, that he was perfect and that he didn't need Jesus as a savior. He thought he was gonna get into heaven because he was perfect. The lady that was a sinner recognized she was a sinner and that she needed a savior. This woman was like the man that Jesus spoke of who owed a lot of money to the creditor, but she couldn't pay and she deserved death as we all do for our sins. But just as the man's debt was canceled, this woman's sins were canceled by Jesus when he forgave her. And this woman knew that Jesus was the savior and that he was worthy of all honor and respect. Simon again did not think that he needed Jesus. Therefore, Simon loved Jesus little. How much has Jesus forgiven our sins? You and I, boys and girls, have the privilege to honor Jesus. We have the privilege to show him our love and our honor. And it is an honor for us to be able to serve him. We need to place Jesus Christ number one in our lives. He should be more important to us than anything else. Our friends, our toys, our video games, anything that we have. To truly give honor to Jesus is to place him first in our lives. That means always reading his word and always obeying his word and doing what he wants to do in our lives. So let's finish up with verses 49 and 50. So it says, and those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this man who even forgives sins? Then Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Hmm. The people at the table wondered why Jesus was forgiving sins. They knew that only God for, could forgive sins, but Jesus had all authority to forgive sins because he is God. And that is why he is worthy of all of our honor because he is the only one that can forgive us our sins. Jesus told this woman her faith had saved her. Simon was very mistaken by thinking he could keep the whole law to save him. We're saved by grace through, grace through faith. And that tells us in Ephesians 2.8 that we're saved by faith. We're saved through grace by faith. Sorry about that. So I'm going to read Ephesians 2.8 to you. And this is what it says, Ephesians 2.8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. So that's a gift, boys and girls, that we get. We're saved by grace through faith. Simon's pride kept him from realizing he was a sinner like the woman and that she needed and that he needed to be forgiven of his sins. Even though Simon tried to keep the law, his hearts and his thoughts were still evil. And again, as I said earlier, if we break one law, we're guilty of all. For this reason, for this reason no one None of us can ever keep the law. We're not perfect, we can't be perfect. We're sinners, just like this woman and everybody else in the world. For this reason, Jesus came to earth and he died for our sins. He died on the cross to cancel our debt so that we could one day spend eternity in heaven with him if we would acknowledge that we are sinners and if we would repent of our sins and if we would accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Boys and girls, it's very, very important that we look at our own hearts and ask ourselves about receiving God's forgiveness and acknowledging that we're sinners. We can't get into heaven because of our parents. We can't get into heaven by doing good works. We can't get into heaven by reading the Bible or going to church. We can only get into heaven by asking Jesus Christ into our hearts. Have you asked Jesus into your heart? Remember, Simon was a prideful man. He was a Pharisee and thought he could be good and perfect to get into heaven. But this woman acknowledged that she was a sinner and needed a savior. So I hope that you will understand you're a sinner and the only way to get into heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for you and he died on the cross for me and he loves us all. So if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and savior, 
I want you to pray this prayer with me because this is the way to spend eternity with Jesus. So let's pray. Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of all of the sins that I've committed. I know that you died on the cross, that you are God, the only one who can get me into heaven. I acknowledge that you came and died for my sins and I repent of my sins and ask, Lord, that your blood would forgive me of my sins and that one day I could spend eternity in heaven with you. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord. I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So boys and girls, if you prayed that prayer, that means you're forgiven and that you've acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And guess what? You can have eternity in heaven now. One day, you will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. So if you did pray this prayer and you asked Jesus to forgive your sins, I want you to go and tell your mom or your dad. Or you could even tell someone at the church. So, or you could even email me. And you can do that by contacting Darla and Mark at church and they can let me know. Anyway, I love you boys and girls. I pray that you have a blessed day and I pray that you will truly understand the difference between relationship and religion. We want relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to get to know him better and better every day. Thank you, God bless you, and until next time, may God keep you close to his heart and may you hold on to him with everything you have because he loves you so much. God bless you, bye.